Λοιπόν, αυτό που θέλω να κάνει τώρα είναι πλήρη αποδόμηση του κινήματο των, των flat earthers. Σε αυτού, αυτών που πιστεύουν στην επίπεδη γη. Στην ειδικότητά σου, σε δεν είναι καθόλου πιστικά έτσι. Δεν υπάρχει ούτε ένα. Ωραία, ωραία. Δεν υπάρχει ούτε ένα επιχείρημα από αυτά που να μοιάζει πιστικό. Ούτε ένα. Δεν έχω διαβάσει ούτε ένα. Όταν ε, έχουμε έκλειψη σελήνη, τι είναι η έκλειψη σελήνη, είναι η σκιά τη γη που πέφτει πάνω στη σελήνη. Ναι. Ε, είχε δει ο Αριστοτέλη κιόλα ότι αυτό το πράγμα είναι στρογγυλό. Είναι, έχει, ε, είναι κυκλικό, ναι. είναι ένα κυκλικό δίσκο. Άρα είχε καταλάβει ότι η γη είναι σφαιρική. Είμαστε στο Manhattan Beach του Los Angeles. Μέχρι εδώ για πάρα πολύ ωραία μέρα. Δεν υπάρχει ίχνος Τα πω σύννεφο ούτε τώρα είναι κατά γάλα του ζωγράμου. Ακριβώ εδώ βλέπουμε τον ήλιο που είναι ακριβώ από πάνω μα. Εντάξει, πολύ ωραία. Και ακριβώ δίπλα του είναι η σελήνη. Νομία τώρα. Δεν ξέρω πώ θα το ζουμάρω με αυτό εδώ. Θα δω μετά στο βίντεο πώς θα φανεί. Λοιπόν, η Σελήνη αυτή τη στιγμή είναι σαν σε μια παρανοιχίδα με τη σκιά της να είναι στο κάτω μέρος και από αριστερά έτσι όπως τη βλέπουμε το οποίο δεν μπορεί να κολλάει όταν έχουμε τον ήλιο ακριβώς εδώ μπροστά μας και θεωρητικά η γη που είναι εδώ κάτω ρίχνει τη σκιά της Σελήνη υποτίθεται. Ε, εντάξει, τι γίνεται αυτό. Απλά δεν γίνεται. Κά, κάπου οι πληροφορίε είναι λάθο αυτέ που μα έχουν ενταθεί. Κάπου οι πληροφορίε είναι λάθο. Απλώ δεν γίνεται. Εντάξει. Αυτά για την ώρα. Ε, θα ασχοληθώ μετά με το κοιτάξω να, να μιλήσω και για το, το δεύτερο κομμάτι. Σε όλα αυτά που είπε ο φίλο μα ο Πάπτο. Και θα μας μαζέψουν. Because moonlight is demonstrably cooling, not heating. As opposed to the golden preserving effects of sunlight, moonlight is instead curiously silver and putrefying. Not only is the temperature of moonlight not what we've been led to presume, but during the waxing and waning phases of the moon, it is even possible to occasionally see stars and planets directly through the disk of the moon. Some documented examples of this phenomenon include Four astronomers writing in The Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Astronomical Society on March 7th, 1794, that they, quote, saw a star in the dark part of the moon, which had not then attained the first quadrature, 
and from the representations which are given, the star must have appeared very far advanced upon the disk." End quote. On April 7, 1848, Sir James South of the Royal Observatory in Kensington wrote in a letter to the Times newspaper stating that, quote, On the 15th of March, 1848, when the moon was seven and a half days old, I never saw her unilluminated disk so beautifully. On my first looking into the telescope, a star of about the seventh magnitude was some minutes of a degree distant from the moon's dark limb. I saw that its occultation by the moon was inevitable. He goes on to say, The star instead of disappearing the moment the moon's edge came in contact with it, apparently glided on the moon's dark face, as if it had been seen through a transparent moon, or as if a star were between me and the moon. I have seen a similar apparent projection several times. The cause of this phenomenon is involved in impenetrable mystery. As further noted in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society for June 8, 1860, Thomas Gaunt stated of the occultation of Jupiter by the moon on the 24th of May, 1860, quote, I could not see the dark limb of the moon until the planet appeared to touch it, and then only to the extent of the diameter of the planet. But what I was most struck with was the appearance on the moon as it passed over the planet. It appeared as though the planet was a dark object and glided on to the moon instead of behind it, and the appearance continued until the planet was hid, when I suddenly lost the dark limb of the moon altogether." End quote. In fact, seeing stars through the moon is actually a phenomenon occurring fairly often, and if you are diligent and specifically looking for this phenomenon on a starry night, you can occasionally see it, even with the naked eye. Ellipses. Doesn't it strike you when observing the sun and moon coursing through the sky that both appear as similar sized orbs, tracing similarly related 24 hour paths overhead at similar speeds? Is this simply just coincidence? Well, modern astronomy would say absolutely, no question about it. Despite the sun and moon appearing to be the same size, the sun is in fact 400 times larger and 400 times farther away. The sun is in fact the orbital center with the very earth we're standing on spinning around it. Now, during a solar eclipse, it is claimed that the moon is passing between the observer and the sun, thus blocking the light of the sun temporarily from the view of the observer. Okay then what about lunar eclipses? Well, according to the authorities, as we've all been fed, lunar eclipses occur when the ball Earth moves between the sun and the moon, and we see the resulting shadow. But, over 50 times in the last 500 years, none other than the Royal Astronomical Society of Britain has noted lunar eclipses which occurred when both the sun and moon were visible in the sky. Not to mention several of those times when the alleged ball Earth shadow has been seen on the wrong side of the lunar disk. Further, how is it possible that during a total lunar eclipse, the shadow starts off completely black as it creeps up on the moon, but when it fully covers the moon, the moon exhibits that signature reddish glow? My own research has led me to see that the authorities know about and are hiding information regarding a black sun, referred to in Vedic cosmology by the names Rahu and Ketu, classically described as orbs which eclipse both the sun and the moon in regular 18-year cycles. So investigate the subject for yourself and ask questions. Daytime Moon On a ball Earth, the full moon should never be visible in the sky at the same time as the sun, as you'd have to be looking through the Earth in order to do so. No matter how high your altitude, the horizon never descends below eye level, as you'd expect on a ball. In this shot, we can clearly see the full moon well above the horizon, 
despite the risen sun already climbing in the eastern sky behind the camera. And if light were actually bending around these bodies, as some claim, then shouldn't it follow that all these lights appear blurry to us, their edges undefinable as their shed light scatters and bends madly off in all directions? But the luminaries always appear clearly outlined, as they are, unless obfuscated by clouds. So then, how is this phenomenon possible on a ball earth? The answer is that it's simply not, and the earth is flat, with basic laws of perspective determining the angles at which we observe the sun and moon. Yeah.